Hello everybody, I'm Raphael Perry and it's time for some more of Steve Jackson's Sorcery. Now, you will observe that I am not in the exact same position where I ended the previous episode, that position is here. I also have two less stamina, which means I have perished and cast the Zed spell two more times. And now I'm going to explain to you why. A system update messed with the microphone settings of my recording software and changed it to a microphone that does not work. And so I had an entire episode of beautiful silence, which annoyed me. In that episode, I'm going to tell you what I did to explain the two deaths. First off, I went back over here to try and get to the dome and found that because a Z spell had sent me back through time, I no longer had my beeswax. I couldn't cut my way into the dome and regain my rewind point. I then came back and was killed by the red eyes on my way out of the alleyway. I almost outsmarted them. I put up a force field, but apparently one was on my side of the force field and I didn't know, even though I wasn't informed that at all. And so I was burned to death. I then came back here with a Zed spell and went straight up to the citadel, did everything seemingly perfectly, but I may have done something slightly wrong, defeated the Archmage, I recovered the Crown of Kings, and I was leaving from the fortress when something went nasty, because I was reminded that I still have the Zed spell curse on me and every time I die. I'm going to come back here again and replay through this section. You know, even if I die of old age, be brought back here, come through here, do it all again. And the old man who was trapped in the tree near the bridge at the very beginning of the game is apparently the same old man who became a great and powerful necromancer and invented the Zed spell in the past before anyone knew he even existed, and then passed on the curse to me. And I had an option to slay myself and return here. And I did so. And I played all through this section again, making all the same choices as last time, in case it was the fact that going back to see him another second time would reveal something. I was like, okay, so killing him won't do it. If I can kill him and cast the Zed spell on him... But I had Jan the Minimite with me, which may be a problem. So I was able to rescue Jan from his prison cell. His presence did not dispel the influence of the Crown of the Kings on Flanker, but I was able to counter the spells of the Crown on Flanker. And with Jan and Flanker, I was able to confront the Archmage. Jan's presence meant we could not be controlled, and Flanker could just assassinate the Archmage really easily. I have a horrible suspicion that to do this all correctly, I might need to not rescue Jan, or not have him with me, counter the spells on Flanker. I might need to actually not have Flanker with me when I, I might need to go through a whole massive counter spell battle with the Archmage, because it felt a bit too easy. And I might need to go for a massive counterspell battle of the Archmage, which may then allow me to meet the Necromancer and uh, undo his curse. And obviously, when I got back there, I met the Necromancer again. I had Jan and Flanker with me again. And I didn't want to... I was going to start the episode there. But then, I found that since I was outside the fortress, I could rewind. I could rewind all the way back to here. I could not rewind to the Z destination. But I could rewind to just after it. Well, to anywhere after it, in fact. So being outside the fortress meant I could rewind to any position inside the fortress. So I rewound to here two deaths later, to repeat my former path, see if I can 
redeem my former folly. I won't go and get killed by the red eyes again. That won't really achieve much. So here we are. You follow the main road around a corner. Your pa you pass broken buildings, fallen into disrepair. Some still show signs of habitation. It passes by the monastery gate. The sun bakes the flagstones. Before you is a stone facade that stretches the length of the street. Two men in heavy robes sit on the steps. I suspect that if I go into the monastery, I may be able to acquire a monk's robe. Doubtful. Remember the archmage told me to take my robe off, so now I have to do all of this without a disguise. I may be able to borrow one gold piece and gamble with the monks and play the dice game, which I'm not necessarily very good at. I'm good at spotting patterns, but I'm not good at reading my enemy's intentions as part of my autism. So, I think I'm just going to have to press on. There's no time to linger, especially not in my undisguised state. You follow the road which gets better kept and busier with every step. You're approaching some kind of central square. An old beggar woman lounges against the well nearby, watching people come and go from the market. A wider road leads west into a run-down area of the city. You're in the middle part of the day, and yet the citadel is still cold. I have no money to go to market, and heading into that bu guard building there without a disguise is a death wish. The sun disappears, heading towards the horizon. You stride out into the middle of the public square where Mampang's inhabitants go about their business. In the centre is a huge statue of a faceless man holding a crown aloft, the Archmage. I will not cast a spell. Not at this time. This section is dominated by a wide road that leads upwards towards the inner tower. Guards flank the way, scowling at anyone who gets too close. Nearby, you also spy a pillory with a lone prisoner shackled in. A bustling market is in full swing further north, or rather to the west. Oh no, it's different compass directions, isn't it? The wind picks up as the evening draws on, because the compass rose is north is that way. So further north, yeah, just about, okay. The reason I'm not skipping through this and doing this off-screen is that this has to essentially be the definitive version, the perfect run. And I suspect it won't be. And the next one, where I try and do this all solo without Flanker or Jan, is the perfect run. Of course, in the original adventure, once you've defeated the Archmage, it's pretty much summon for birdmen to take you home. The eagles have nothing to do with it. Yeah, because Jan asks, why didn't the eagles fly you all the way here? And it's like a, a bit of a plot hole. And it's like, well, in the original adventure, they didn't even come this far, so they shouldn't be here. So, so it's a plot hole that's been created by a change in the game. To There's, there's a number of changes like that to sow doubt in the hero's heart. Or the heart of the heroine, that is. Yeah, hero or heroine, you can have either. Apparently, um, there's even a, a way you can mess it up and transform from one to the other. You walk across the square towards the paved lane on the north side. Unlike most of the roads in Mampang, it is clean and sparsely populated. It curves around the mountain on which the Archmage's tower stands, climbing slowly. A few yards from the square, a group of guards blocks the road. They stand sharp and to attention, sheltering in the shade of a nearby hut. Two of them hold snarling dogs on chains. Well, I shouldn't look suspicious. I'll just go straight ahead. You will have to move. If you stand here too long, you will attract attention. You walk up to greet the guards. 
The nearest comes out to greet you with a growl. Well, the guard snaps. I cast a spell. I kid you not. It is time for sorcery. Okay, fine. Do it this way. I kid you not. It's gonna be an illusion. Looking to the stars, you craft the magic and the bracelet at your wrist begins to ache and throb. You have just a moment in which to decide what illusion to create. For a few moments, you will have control over what the guard sees and hears. And I shall become the Archmage. You craft an illusion over yourself. The guard stares at you in amazement. Archmage, she murmurs. We were not told. Stand aside before I strike you down. Yes, of, of course, she answers smartly, nodding and staring at the floor. And I'll walk straight past her as if she, her existence doesn't even matter to me. You sweep past her up the road and accompanied by the clatter of her armour on the ground as she kowtows behind you. You continue climbing up the north road. This time, my gaze is fixed firmly ahead. I know where I am going. There is no turning back, although I might cast the Zed spell to come back. The road ends in a small wooden door built into a pal wooden palisade. The door appears unguarded, and I will climb over the palisade. You haul yourself up using the rivets in the wood to climb. After a short haul, you're at the top and drop easily down onto the other side. You pick yourself up. You stand in a narrow alleyway, the walls high on both sides. You are within the inner fortress once more. The alleyway runs to the right, but on the left is a low iron doorway. The door down to the city is locked. The sun has almost set and the sky has turned a deep purple there is no smoke on the water. It will be night soon. Let's move on. You make your way along the alley, looking about furtively. Luckily you pass no one. This area seems quite dead. You pass a wooden door and keep on moving. The alleyway turns slightly here, following the curve of the cliff. At the far end, you spot two birdman guards standing by an iron door. They have either not noticed you, or are paying no attention. Another narrow door is on the right, a little further along the alley. Darkness closes in. You should find a suitable spot to sleep, especially on an empty stomach. The night air is cool and good for walking. You head towards the next door in the alleyway. The guards at the far end of the alley take no notice. The sun disappears. I keep moving. You're nearing the end of the alleyway in the guarded iron door. Another rather narrow door is nearby. I will... Listen at the narrow door, peek inside, and slip inside. You enter the chamber of the free birdmen once again. Samaritans of Shin, I am the Analander, you declare, wasting no time. For a moment they reel, then burst into laughter. The one called Piwit clasps your hand and smiles broadly. But you, you are the one we have been waiting for. Come, we will help you. I need you to fly me somewhere. The bird mad nods, almost standing to attention. Where? To him? Now, why would I say yes, take me all the way to him? Unless I wanted to skip the opportunities with Jan and Flanker. 
So what I would need to do would be to find some kind of item in the tower which I could use on a repeat return journey after a Z spell that I would not be able to use Wait a minute! Is this so dumb? Do I literally have the Crown of Kings already because I used the Z spell to go back in time? That would be rather dumb. But I literally did have it. I'm just checking, okay, because that would be good, 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 good. Take me to the Froben Doors. <clears throat> I'm getting so many pep spell ingredients, and yet no opportunities to cast it. The birdmen stare at you in wonder and awe. Are you certain, human? Piwit replies. The doors are certain death. I have been there before, you tell them. I know what I face. Very well, Piwit replies. The creature flaps up into the air, then grasps your shoulders with his claws. A moment later, you are lifted into the air. And I get to fly straight over the Birdmen guards without having even interacted with them in this timeline. The Birdman swoops low over the courtyard towards the gigantic flight of steps. The doors lie at the top, he warns you. A few have climbed these steps. I have never known any to come back down except those taken to Nagamante by birdmen. Waste no time, you must not be seen. The birdman grunts his assent and flies up the stairs. The birdman lowers you gently to the steps. I cannot stay, he hisses. I must not be seen. Dread be with you. So in the original adventure, Piwit the Birdman is the one who carries you back to Annaland, not the eagles from Annaland, who could only go as far as book two. But I don't think he flies all the way. I think he has to rest repeatedly because it's a bloody long journey. With that, he wheels quickly out of sight, leaving you by the colossal doors at the top of the stairs. The night air is freezing cold. Your breath freezes on your lips. Once again, the space by the doors is heavy and silent. You look around the step a little and notice something etched into the stone. It reads, Mampang will be free. Below, there are two S's entwined, and near them, two C's. What could this entail? S for Steve Jackson, S for Sorcery, C for Copyright, not sure about the other one. Um, I've got this kind of Compton or Crompton feel, but that's a kind of Tons and Trolls thing, wasn't it? One of the authors or artists. Was it Steve Compton? I can't remember. Right. You return to the carved door. The door handle is emitting a slight red glow of heat. Someone has left a pack here by the door. I shall look at the pack. The pack is here once again. You flip it open. Inside are a few glass bottles. The same bottles. You lift the bottles out one by one, shaking them to identify their contents. It is a set of potions. Blimbery, blessed water, and fire water. Excellent stuff. I will take those. You stash each bottle, then step quickly away from the discarded pack. I will cast a spell. Hot dot dot hot. You cast the spell across your potion. It begins to glow and fizzle, and I will pour it on the door handle. Once again, you cast the spell and the door handle cools, but the door is still open. 
You have survived one of its traps, but surely there will be more. A uh, rockfall, isn't it? Nobody dies. You look over the door carefully, gaze working from top to bottom. The carvings have morphed a little, now showing figures in strange, frozen poses. Two vertical strokes stand side by side. Two. Okay, game. Give me an F. Give me an A. Give me an L. You move the starlight into order around you, but although you complete the spell, it seems to have no effect, and you do not float into the air as you had expected. I go to open the door. You turn the handle, now completely safe. The door opens, then, once again, the door vanishes from sight. The invisible barrier has returned. Uh, dop, right? Wait. Tell. T. E. L. You weave the enchantment, pulling on the skull cloth skullcap as the magic takes hold. A moment later, the door is visible once more. It would seem your spell has countered the spell of invisibility that had hidden the door. Now you can see it, your hopes lift suddenly. The door to the central tower of Mampang hangs a crack ajar. A good shove will open it, but you feel the presence of a trap here previously. Once more, a message has appeared on the door. And of course, it is the same message as before. You trace out the message on the door, words of the most ancient tongue. I am protected by the worst force in the world. Retreat, for I will take all your yesterdays, and I will take all your tomorrows. Obviously, this is the Z spell. I must cast the Res spell, which is the opposite, but I can't use it. I wonder if I drink the potion instead of using it on the door. Will that help me? And could I then go back through the gate to the birdsmen and ask them to carry me into the tower? You take the vial of holy water from your pack and cast your spell. The water begins to shimmer and shine with an inner light. I will pour the water on the door this time, but I will consider drinking it in future. Although it should have no effect because I'm alive, if I could keep it. You pour the glittering water over the handle of the door. It seems to soak into the wood without any noticeable effect. Where it has had any effect on the door is impossible to say. There is no other way to know. You reach out for the wood and allow your fingers to connect with it. The effect is instant, a fire erupting from the wood and down into your arms. But a moment later the sensation fades. Indeed, you feel refreshed, as though your body had been destroyed and then built anew. You step without difficulty through the Froben door and into the tower beyond. Dun 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 dun. You are back inside the Tower of the Archmage. You close your eyes and try to pray, but you cannot do it. The walls seem to mock your every whisper. No voices hear you. Except they blatantly do if I want them to. This place has the appearance of a cave, half submerged by water. The black stone is slick with water and spongy moss grows from every crack and crevice. Cobwebs blur the corners as though the ceiling is hidden by mist. It is as though no one has walked this way in a thousand years. Time to try this once again, ignoring the two off-camera attempts which didn't count. I will do this for healing because I will rest before I need to do it again. You reach the base of a wide flight of stairs. They seem to fill the space of the tower as though whatever lived here was impossibly wide. A few closed doors lead off to other rooms in the tower. I believe one of these doors contained a prisoner who was actually the Archmage in disguise, who would give me bad advice and force me to get locked in and I need to use the Z spell to get out of here again. Um, hmm. 
You look over the doors. They seem ancient. One seems chewed. Gred only knows who lives here. It would surely do you little good to find out. The climb is exhausting and you quickly lose count of the steps. There are no windows and no doors. Nothing to measure your progress by. It is as though the tower is screwing downwards into the ground with every step you take. As if every step I take, I get no higher and it's just going down, down, down. Ooh, what a nasty sensation. Obviously this window here is part of the no windows. <laughs> After some time, you spy a door up ahead set in the inside wall of the tower. It is the cell. You pace forwards, every sense on high alert. As you curve upwards, you come to a familiar, heavy door. It is the cell in which you were imprisoned. A tiny iron grill is set at eye level with a hook directly opposite, no doubt to taunt prisoners with the sight of the key, but the hook is empty. The stairs continue upwards from here. Now, at this point, I had hoped that the very presence of Jan would dispel the effect of the crown on Flanker, but that was not the case, and I had to... I had to bid Jan give us some time alone so I could dispel the spells on him. This is interesting because it also explains why Jan doesn't immediately dispel the Z spell on me. Mm. So it seemed the anti-magic aura of the Minimite doesn't nullify active magic effects, but merely prevent them from being imposed upon reality. Which is not how I'd generally interpreted it in the past at all. You peer in through the cell. Sure enough, there is the Minimite moving around in small circles. At least it is still alive. You put your lips to the grill and hiss, Jan! It's me! And who are you? Some tormentor? comes a whispered reply. It is clear the creature has not even looked up. It's good to see you alive, you tell it. They don't want to kill me, it replies. They tell me I'm useful so long as I'm contained. You take the key from your bag, sliding it into the lock and turn. The tumblers fall over and the door slides open. Out of the darkness of the cell, Jan patters forward. The creature stares at you in disbelief. Analander, is that really you? You can only smile. Now, I can tell him to go away. I suspect he won't. I need you. No, I don't want to give it feed his ego that much. Come with me. The Minimite nods. I told you you'd need me. Didn't I tell you? Well, yes, back in book one when you were a massive nuisance. I don't remember being able to take him with me necessarily in book four many years ago. But hey. You pick up the Minimite and put it carefully into your money pouch. The stairs continue upwards. Glue me, remarks Jan. But at least you know which way to go. How does he know it? Well, there's like the stairs go up or down. It's not over complicated at the moment. The stairs reach a landing that curves around the tower. A coloured glow spills across the stones from a large, stained window, shining despite the darkness outside. The Minimite tugs at your cloak. There is some terrible magic at work here. I can taste it. Flanker, you call. The assassin steps from the shadows once more. You have got better at seeing me, I see. Flanker replies. That's right up there with I see, said the blind man. Flanker is being sarcastic and witty at the same time. Push him through the window. This is an odd, strange choice. 
This could result in losing an arm, just like trying to place a hand on his arm. But for s why is this here, right? This feels like a very nasty, wicked, and unnecessary thing to do. The only reason to do this would be if I think I need to face the Archmage without him on my own. Or with Jan, but without Flanker. So why would having Flanker here with me prevent me from success? I'm not sure. Step aside, Flanker, you say warily. Flanker shakes his head slowly. When we met, I knew my destination, but not my target. Had I known, I would have killed you sooner, Annalander. You're under the power of the crown, you tell him. You must fight it! No, Flanker shakes his head. My purpose is clear. You're right, hisses Jan, but it's too deep inside him. Maybe I should go and let you... He spreads his arms wide and makes a quiet, gibbering noise. Yes, I'll tell him to go. Jan, you hiss, leave us. Flanker nods along the corridor. Along there is the Archmage's library. You may wait there. Jan looks up at you for a long moment, then nods and hops away through the door. You feel a weight lift from your shoulders as his presence recedes. Flanker hasn't been paid to kill the Minimite. He's an assassin after all, not a thug. I recall that I bested you. If I had known I was to kill you, I would have stabbed you in the back the moment you walked away from me. Flanker replies coldly. Better to have done it then, before the hardships you have endured to reach this place, than to cut you down so close to your goal. I'll draw my sword. You draw your sword from the scabbard. Flanker nods as he recognizes the curved assassin's blade. You cannot beat me, you tell him. You know it. Only one of us will walk away from this spot, he answers. I have killed a hundred men and a hundred women in my time, and I have studied your style in our long journey together. Then you should know I'm likely to try some kind of spell. You advance on him, assassin's sword pointed forward. Flanker paces to meet you. Let us finish this, then. His blade leaves its scabbard in a curved movement, and I will cast a spell. And if I recall correctly... The three spells that would counter the charm would render the target invisible, asleep, and stupid. So, uh, let's start with nap time. You complete the spell, but it does not seem to take effect. And yet, for a moment, Flanker seems to falter, staggering sideways as though struck. Then he recovers, one hand against the wall. I cannot let you live, he murmurs. I cannot. I shall cast another spell. This time, Yaz. The spell is formed, and though it does not disappear, it does not take hold. But again, Flanker appears dazed. Something is definitely happening to him. He looks at you, his eyes searching and filled with wonder, but slowly they cloud over once more. And now, I must render him dim-witted. Although the spell will not have that effect. He must be rendered too stupid to be deceived by illusions. A simple-minded state. Consulting the constellations overhead, you bind the spell. You complete the spell. The assassin slowly stops in his path. He blinks slowly as though rousing himself. You, he breathes. I was going to kill you. You were under the power of the crown. Flanker's eyes narrow with rage. The archmage must pay for this insult, he breathes. He points to the door ahead. At the top of the tower, the maggot is unharmed. And is unarmed. This will be easy. 
easy. You head along the landing. Flanker walks ahead in silence. There is an archway here, but it contains a recessed stone wall, as if someone has bricked over a doorway. Once more you close your eyes and run through the illusory wall. Flanker follows, somewhat surprised. The reason he's surprised by this is that originally he climbed up the outer wall of the tower, scaling it, and did not experience the inside very much. But he must have come down to get to there. Did he climb down again and come in through a window? You're back inside the Archmage's vast library. The Minimite looks up at the Assassin. You two made up, then? After a fashion. Good, Jan declares. This feels right. The three of us back together again. Kind of getting flashbacks to the Elf and Dwarf companions from uh, Crypt of the Sorcerer. The, um, yeah, no, not, no, not what you're... You may be thinking... Caverns of the Snow Witch? No, no, not that one. The one for Hunchbacked Bald Sorcerer, um, where the, the dwarf could go mad in a hot air balloon and shoot you dead with a crossbow instead of helping you. Um, although they were reminiscent of those two companions, but definitely different characters. Hmm. Have you found a way forward from here? You ask. Not yet, Jan says, buzzing around the room, peering at this and that. The library is dead silent and dusty. Clearly no servants come here. This place is for the Archmage alone. So, the illusion that hides the stairs has not been dispelled by the presence of the Minimite, which means he may not yet be totally effective against the Crown. All he can do is prevent its will, bearer's will being imposed on people who are with him. I will sleep here, because if I do not, I will get exhausted from having stayed up all night. It seems odd to sleep so close to your destination, but to meet the Archmage tired and weak would be unwise. Removing your pack, you try to settle, despite the uncomfortable floor. You have eaten nothing today, but you have no provisions, only a single vial of blimbury juice, which I shall not eat or drink, rather. I wouldn't want to eat the vial, it's made of glass. You close your eyes and let your tiredness overtake you. What is left of the night is restless with visions. Through it all, you hear, feel the heat of Annaland burning, should your quest fail. You lost a little maximum stamina, one point again because of the Z spell, and held the crown of kings in your hand. Yes, I did, but never you mind that, because you haven't seen that yet. The Archmage is waiting for you. You wake to find the Minimite fluttering around the room cheerfully. I found the door, he remarks. It's over here. Well, over there. He points towards a new opening. Flanker is guarding the door. Is it possible that reading a book here might help? Possibly not. We move on. We'll go up these stairs. Yes. You climb another winding set of stairs up to the next level of the tower. You are high now. The wind outside is roaring past, shivering the glass in the windows. Let's get this over with, Jan mutters. This way, Flanker says in a voice like gravel. Sorry, my throat's a bit too dry for gravelly. This way. The corridor winds around the tower until it reaches a small wooden door. Another window casts a dim light across the floor. Once more, you are back at the door to the Archmage's garret. You can only hope you are better prepared this time. Literally no better than last time. Um, can a Minimite truly block the crown, you ask? The Minimite nods once, seriously. I hope so, yes. Otherwise we're both dead. Probably me more than you. Flanker closes his eyes for a moment, offering a short murmured prayer. You turn to Flanker. Flanker, do you wish to kill him or shall I? 
I am yours to command, Flanker replies, but if you do not kill him, be assured that I shall. From somewhere below, there comes the echo of screams, and I have no time to determine what that is, but it's probably really important. Then let's go in. Draw your sword, advises the Minimite coldly. You can cut that crown off his neck. Through the door we go and up the stairs into the lair of the Archmage. We are at the very heart of his domain. You enter the garret room. Behind the desk, the old man is sitting, but his expression is not as it was. His eyes are wide with fear. You are the Analander, he breathes. You finally come. After all this time, Bria saw the truth, and here you are. Bria was the girl in Book 3 who became an old woman in the cave on the edge of the valley, wasn't she? And went mad. Flanker draws his sword and holds it outwards. You feel the power of the crown, and then you feel it ebbing gently away under the Minimite's influence. You will not enchant me this time. Why do I have an option to draw my sword when I've supposedly already done it? Or did I ignore Jan's insistence? You will not enchant me this time. The Archmage is sweating. This time? I don't know what you mean, but... But I see you are a sorcerer of remarkable power. Jan clambers with some difficulty up onto the desk, struggling to balance without his wings, and the Archmage glares down at him with clear hatred. I could tell him to give me the crown. I could attempt to take the crown. If I take, pick a wrong choice here, I suspect something very bad could happen to Jan, being within arm's reach of the Archmage. So I'm just going to do this instead. Kill him, Flanker. The next instant is almost too quick to see. Flanker's blade flashes. It leaps like a fish from the water. For an instant, the Archmage is sitting upright, and then the crown rolls across the stone floor, coming to rest against your boot. Why would I do this? No. What kind of iconoclast would I be? No, I'll pick up the crown. It is a lightweight thing, poorly made, and the jewels inlaid around its rim are chipped and fractured. In fact, I found this description so odd and jarring, almost as if it's a false crown, that I had to go check the description in the original book, and it is not described as being this badly made at all. Piece of junk! The Minimite remarks. Flanker wipes his sword against a cuff. My contract is at an end, Master, he reports, nodding to you. My purpose is complete. Did I go back in time and hire him to come over the whole way with... I am not your master, you reply, but he only shakes his head. I owe you my life and I owe you my honour, Flanker replies. You have spared me a second time, Analander. My life is forfeit. You turn the crown over in your hands. I'm not going to wear it, although maybe I should. Because when I meet the necromancer, I may be able to use the crown to command him to remove the curse from me. I'm not going to tell Flanker to, 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 to not take things so seriously. He'll only get more serious. Time to leave, you declare. You are taking the crown back to your masters, Flanker asks. Again, element of doubt. Should I not, you ask? You have journeyed long and far to prevent it falling into the hands of evil, Flanker replies. But not all evil is born abroad. Some grows within our own fields and cribs. I must complete my quest, you reply, before heading to the window and clambering out. The Minimite hops onto your shoulder as you go. The wind atop the turret is intense. It tries to rip you from the tiles as though under the command of the dead archmage. 
Jan shivers, gripping onto your shoulder with embedded claws. Don't drop that thing, he grumbles. Well, don't drop that thing, he grumbles. That's more like it, yeah. Down below you see the armies of the Archmage mustering in the city square. I shall wave the crown. The longer I spend up here in the strong winds, the worse for me, I imagine. You lift the crown and wave it high in the air, hoping the gold crest eagles waiting near the citadel will see. Nothing happens. I hope you got a plan for getting down from here, the Minimite remarks. I could keep waving... Right. If I keep waving the crown, I'm off balance and the winds are strong. If I look down at the army, especially leaning to peer, I'm also off balance. I will look over the crown. You ignore the Minimite and look down at the crown in your hands. Now, with the Archmage defeated and the crown recovered, the magnitude of what you have done is beginning to sink in. All because of this crown, this ancient worn thing. It is a relic from another age. It seems impossible to believe such a tiny pebble could cause such ripples in the world. It is as though the crown is asking you to leave it behind. You quickly stuff it in your pack. Just then you look up, attention taken by the keening sound coming from the west. So this reminds me of, I think it's Henry III or Edward II or something, when he has to surrender to the rebels and hand over the crown. And he refers to it as this hollow crown. You know, making it very important. The crown itself is meaningless. It's the head that wears it that is important. The crown has no power of its own. But it bestows power on those who wear it. And yes, this is the crown of kings from the Talisman board game. Essentially where it came from. Or, I can't remember, was Talisman Post or Sorcery print, printed first? I can't remember for certain. Anyway... The sound is accompanied by the sound of wings. Yes, the sound of keening is accompanied by the sound of wings. Otherwise, that sentence could be misleading if you weren't paying attention. From inside the turret, you hear Flanker call. I hear something. A bird. I don't see anything, the Minimite says, peering over the battlement. I hear it, but I don't see it. I will pray. You close your eyes here. At the end of things, make one last prayer to Korga for a safe and soft landing. Flanker clambers out of the window, coming to perch beside you on the turret. I see nothing, he declares, but I hear them. Are you there? you call out. There is a great screeching, but no reply. But then again, the gold crest eagles of Analand can turn their feathers to make themselves invisible, yet they cannot speak. But calling out means they know I'm ready. There is nothing for it but to jump. You stand and step from the turret edge, Jan clinging to your arm. And plunge into the great abyss beyond. You fall too far, past where any eagle might have flown, Flanker falling with you. You look to him for help, but there is nothing he can do. He has no trick hiding in his cloak. Then there is a sudden rush of air above you, claws catching your shoulder. Rescued! squeals Jan, and it seems he is right. You have been caught. The great bird has you and will not let you fall. You are lifted slowly into the air. There is no mention of Flanker here. Do we see him plummet away alone below us? Or has he too been rescued? We simply do not know. You are flying. The eagle soars up into the air. To Analand, you cry, and the creature calls out in agreement. Finally, after so long, you are on your way home, and with the crown of kings intact. The journey to Analand is dizzyingly fast. The eagles fly high and do not stop. Multiple eagles, so then perhaps Flanker has also been saved. You clutch onto your pack and the weight of the crown inside seems to do nothing. You fly past the wastes of the backlands and the walls of Kar, coming into view of the Shamutanti hills once more. The 
this is an incredibly fast speed to traverse such a long distance and feels like there's something wrong. You pass through the peaks and over the Liaki Pass. Not the Leaky Pass, the Liaki Pass. I could look down or look ahead. I shall look down. The Shamutanti Hills are far below like a green carpet, a place of lush, verdant beauty compared to the horrors you have seen. It seems impossible to be travelling this way, unrolling so many steps. You catch Flanker's eyes beneath his mask, and it seems he is thinking the same. So we know he is safe, but still, this seems dodgy. I remember Dumpus and Orostanti and the, the big bridge. You follow the course of a river, the curves through the Mediki forest. Hmm. Have you been to Analand before? What will you do now? Um, I'll go with this one. I don't know who I'm speaking to. Have you been to Analand before? Have you been to Analand before? You cry out to Flanker over the rushing wind. I have, he cries back. And who knows? Perhaps this time I will stay. Then the eagles begin to glide lower. Make a nice curving motion to here. The eagles are skimming a village of low huts. For the first time, you begin to feel nervous. What if the Archmage was right? What if the crown is too powerful to entrust to Annalan's king? Wasn't there a snake in a box in one of the huts in there? And I believe the tree the old man was in was either here or around here somewhere. However, we are headed to the Cantopani Gate. And this is where my problems truly begin. Finally, the great bird settles to earth in the long grass beside the Cantopani Road, just in sight of the Shamotanti Wall. This is home, is it? Jan asks. Seems nice. He hops off your arm and begins scrabbling away. Let's go! But Flanker is hovering, seemingly holding back. What ails you? you ask, turning to your masked friend. I have faced many thing terrifying things, he replies, but the attentions of a crowd has not been one of them. Then be my shadow, you reply kindly. He nods. You may not see me, but I will be there. Then... Once again, you see Froben, the beggar, approaching, laughing at you for failing to lift his terrible curse. But I am cursed. So, originally, when he approached me in the silent episode, he mocked me and pointed out that I was cursed and would continuously be sent back to the Archmage's Citadel. So... The gates of home are within sight, but the beggar is right. You have not died today, but some day you will die, and then the stars will drag you back to Mampang once more to do it all again, and so on and on, never ending unless you can break the curse of Froben. You turn to see Flanker looking at you with heavy eyes. Do you need a favour from me, Annalander? Yeah, could you, like, murder that beggar and then I cast res on him at the moment of his death? Or Z on him at the moment of his death to transfer the curse back to him? So, I can ask Flanker to kill me. And that's what I've done the previous time I was here. I can draw my sword or just step towards the gate. Um, if I draw my sword, am I starting a fight with the, the Flanker or killing the beggar? I cannot... Ask Flanker to kill the beggar. You draw your assassin's sword from your belt, hands shaking. What are you... Now what are you doing? Jan asks, voice quivering a little. We're friends, aren't we? Flanker? 
so I can only use it to kill myself if Flanker and Jan are not here with me. You reply. Flanker, you begin. I am here, he replies. Kill me, Flanker. So it seems that whatever I must do to prevent this situation must be done in the Citadel. Probably in the Tower. Probably with magic. Probably without Jan. Which means... Face... Ah, oh, this, is, this is really tricky. Right, um... Flanker stares at you from under his mask. My contract is at an end, he says. Not for your contract. For the old world. He nods. If you're sure, friend, I will do as you ask. There is a flicker as he draws his butterfly sword. Give me a sign, friend. So I can step away change my mind, attempt another course of action to either slay myself or just walk through the gate anyway, cursed. I nod. What happens next is so fast that you barely notice if a blade slashes your throat. You die, grateful for Flanker's great skill. A cry goes up from the Anland wall and the last thing you see is the gate sliding open and a final glimpse of your home before your spirit fades. The last thing you hear is the scuttling of Jan's feet racing away from where you lie, but the heavens reach down to grasp you as death closes in. And the Zed spell is not the only spell available to me here. But whatever this spell is, I have it not. Perhaps this spell with the G can be learned in the Archmage's library. So sadly, I must cast the Zed spell once again. The spell tears you apart, tossing you amongst the stars. Oh, wait, what? Hold on. So, this was available, this was not. But when I clicked on the Zed spell, it suddenly was available here. That is a pain. But well worth remembering. Once more, the explosion dies back as though receding. You, walk, you look around yourself once more. You have lost another point of maximum stamina. You turn your cloak up and move quickly away. The road runs past you, east to west. You must keep going. And then here is where I left off last time. So what I think I'm going to do is get back to the Froben doors off camera and then decide what to do in the very next episode. So I'm definitely of the opinion that whatever I can do to break the curse has to be here in Mampang. It can't be in the Sanctuary, because I can't get in with the beeswax that I don't have anymore. And it can't be... Jan seems to be preventing it, so I think I do have to have a big shot. You know, I almost did feel sorry for the Archmage. He's like an old, confused man, doesn't know why we're breaking in to kill him and acting like we've done it all before. He's like, who are you people? I don't even know what's going on. It felt very wrong. So I wonder if approaching the door without Jan, I would be able to cast spells again to counter the crown and go in. But then Flanker would be controlled and would kill me. So I'd need to do it without Flanker as well, which is where the pushing him out the window seems to become a viable option. I'm not sure about this and it feels duff. It feels like a nasty last little gotcha to um, to annoy the player at the end of the game. A final puzzle that must be unpicked. And 
the fact that the whole episode recorded silently bothered me to the point where I didn't really spend too much thought thinking how to solve this riddle. But if I do now have a Z spot at the doors, that's two Z places. That's weird. Then again, the Z spell is acting in a completely different manner in this game to what I'm used to. I think I might need to sleep on this a little to ponder how best to approach this situation. And I said I was going to do this off camera, but I seem to be doing it on camera at the moment, don't I? So, you know what? It's not going to take much longer. I might as well waffle a bit further as I continue. So, um, I'm not entirely certain how I'm going to continue. I feel that losing... S yeah. Right, so this route, this path, involves virtually no stamina expense after the Froben doors, right? I can literally breeze through it all with no difficulty whatsoever. However, what I may be able to do, the reason I might need the stamina points is for a big counterspelling battle of the Archmage without Flanker being present. Oh, that's going to be... I have a really nasty feeling that's what I need to do. So what would happen in the original game? you would encounter the Archmage in his disguise as the old prisoner. You'd call him out. He would he would die, and the demon thing would come out of him, and you'd fight that. And if you defeated that, you could even resurrect the Archmage, and he would be incredibly grateful and have forgotten his wickedness, because that was mostly the demon inside him, and he'd, he'd give you the whistle to call... For Birdmen, if you didn't have it already, and you could take the crown and go back, and you'd win. Um, fly me somewhere, not to the moon, to the Froben doors. So I can ask them to take me directly to the tower, bypassing, pr pro probably bypassing Flanker and Jan. The reason I'm not asking them to take me directly to the tower is I need to decide if I want the help of Jan and Flanker or not. I suspect that having Jan and Flanker present, this will just play out the same every time. So I'm not sure entirely how I want to handle this, but I'm going to take these potions. And then, I'm going to leave the episode here. I hope you all enjoyed this one. And I will look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Even if this one only showed you a retrace of my steps from a previous episode. Thank you all very much for watching. And I will see you all soon. Bye bye for now everyone. Don't worry, there will be another episode of Sorcery in, you know, in a day or two.